What's up everyone? I'm Sophia Pasternak, an award-winning author and mental health professional, and this channel is all about the intersection where writing meets psychology. I also post stuff about my author journey, baking bread, and outdoorsy stuff. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you're notified when I post a new video. So hi, hello, you might be here from my Instagram post talking about why I concentrate so much on mental health in my writing or kind of on this channel and, and in general. Part of that is because, you know, that's my job and I have to um, kind of see in real life the negative effects of bad media representation of mental illness. But then also because I have mental illness, I have generalized anxiety disorder, that's what I'm diagnosed with, which I don't know if that's correct. Um, I, I feel sorry for my therapist because I, you know, can come to him and be like, listen, uh, so I don't think that this is typical of GAD. I think that it's this other thing, blah, blah, blah. blah. I'm sure he's so tired of me armchair psychologizing, armchair therapisting myself, but whatever, that's fine. One of the reasons why I focus so much on mental health um, in both in fiction and then also just for writers in the writing community is because... Um, and I've talked a little bit about this before, about how like creatives are more likely to have mental illness than people who are like non-creatives. Nobody really knows why there's been some studies done on, on yeah, there's increased prevalence of mental illness among people who identify as like artists, writers, musicians, that kind of thing. So people who create. Um, I believe the kind of the theory that, that I kind of resonate with more is um, in order to create art, you have to be tapped really deeply and uniquely into the emotions of both yourself and of other people. And I'm not saying that artists are all empaths, but what I am saying is that people who create art have to be tuned into emotions more because they're trying to elicit an emotional response in their audience. So if you write a song, um, a sad song, you want your audience to be sad. So you have to understand the emotion of sadness, which means you have to spend a lot of time sitting in that emotion and that forced sadness almost can lead into depressive symptoms. Um, and your brain is just like any other part of your body. You know, if you do, um, if you only do weight lifting with one arm, you're going to have one big beefy arm and one little skinny arm. So if you are exercising the emotion of sadness or the emotion of fear or the emotion of anger more um, as a creative exercise, then that might, you know, you're, you're exercising that like fear or sadness muscle in your brain so that can kind of lead into oh now i'm sad all the time um there's also this misconception that all the greatest artists had substance abuse disorders they were alcoholics or they did some kind of drug or something like that and a lot of the times with them what i think was happening is that they had this other mental illness going on and they were self-medicating with these other drugs um and not necessarily that those drugs were the things that made them creative or made them brilliant, but they were brilliant already, but they had mental illness that made them suffer. And so they were self-medicating. So you don't have to be an alcoholic to be a good writer. <laughs> um, I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but you know, whatever. Um, and then I also, so one patient of mine kind of stands out um, and they had bipolar disorder um, pretty severe bipolar disorder and we're struggling a lot with um, kind of controlling it and, or not controlling it, managing it. And they would kind of tell me a lot. Yeah, you see bipolar in, you know, in TV shows and in movies. And, and that's how I felt for a long time that I had to be because they are crazy. And I thought I had to be crazy and I couldn't be normal. And then, you know, they started to go to therapy and, and, and said, oh, I, I can be a normal functioning person. Like I don't have to be up here and then down here and then up here. Like that's not what I'm doomed to be for my whole life. Um, and so just growing up and consuming this media of, well, you have mental illness. So that means that you can't ever function like anybody else um, kind of resigned them to this fact that, oh yeah, I'm just going to be like nuts my whole life. Um, so we did a lot of, of really... Um, I think very important talks about the expectation of having a mental illness. A lot of media kind of portrays it as, yeah, you're, you're abnormal and you're broken and, and you're always going to struggle. And that's not necessarily true. Everybody, so when I say struggle, I mean, 
your life is always going to be difficult and it's always going to be just such a clawing to get anywhere normal and we all know how I don't like normal as a as a concept I also don't like happy so um when I say normal it's the perception by the general public of like this is what people are supposed to look like and that in itself is flawed because people are so varied and, and humanity is such a huge spectrum of of different personalities and different um, you know, physical characteristics and, and no two people are even close to the same. Even identical twins are radically different. So when you have created this ideal of this is what a normal person looks like and also this is what a mentally ill person looks like. And if you know you have mental illness, but you don't look like either of those things, you can feel very lost and very like, well, well what am I supposed to look like? What do I do? Humans are very social creatures and we have specific neurons in our brains that are designed to mirror other human beings. You want, your brain desperately wants to be like all the cool kids. It wants to be like everybody else. And so when you are put into this space of cognitively not being able to look like anyone else, it can be very distressing both emotionally to you and just to your brain. Your, you know, your brain is like, well, who do I look like? What do I do? Um, so to me, really hitting hard, good mental health representation in media in books particularly because that's what i do i write books um is very important because you have a lot of power as an author you do whether you want to admit it or not you have a lot of power and in representing anything incorrectly doing no research or very lazy research um, you know, kind of being insensitive, insensitive to things. And there's a lot of talk going on right now about like cancellation and, and that kind of thing. And that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about you in particular as a writer doing the work and representing mental health in an accurate and empathetic way. Depicting somebody with bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or borderline personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder as some kind of irredeemable crazy person is it, it ain't it that ain't it and if i catch you doing it i am gonna yell at you <laughs> so don't do it um but just coming at any sort of depiction of mental illness knowing that that person this character that i'm writing about needs to be a person and people are going to read them and interpret them as a person and there's also kind of the assumption especially in kidlet by readers that you, the author, are some kind of educated, not necessarily like an expert, like a subject matter expert, but you have educated yourself on what's going on. So if you're writing a book about depression, people are going to assume that you did at least a little bit of research about depression. And if you didn't, you are doing your audience a huge disservice and basically misinforming them. And you might not be doing it on, you know, on purpose, but you are doing it. You need to really look into what it really looks like to be depressed because you're going to have depressed people you're going to have anxious people you're going to have people with schizophrenia reading your book and if you are writing a character who has schizophrenia and you are doing it in the most stereotypical incorrect hollywood way that reader with schizophrenia is going to see another piece of themselves reflected back at them that you are the worst you are crazy and you are useless so I just, I don't think anybody wants to be that author that, you know, pushes that narrative. So don't, <laughs> um, do your research. Um, there are some really great, there are some really great resources out there. I mean, the internet, you can, you, you have the whole internet. You have absolutely no reason to not do at least a little bit of research. You can find support groups for people with schizophrenia or bipolar or, um, any other type of disorder, you can find specific websites dedicated to people who have this. And a lot of them want to educate neurotypical people, non-mentally ill people about what it's like. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos that you can go look up here that's, you know, an auditory hallucination simulator. There are people, there are channels on YouTube that's like, hey, I have schizoaffective disorder, here's what it's like. So if you want to incorporate these characters into your books, I would recommend doing an obscene amount of research ahead of time. And um, 
like, I don't have schizoaffective disorder. I don't have any kind of psychotic disorder. I can't tell you what it's like to have a hallucination. But they can. So, so use them, especially the ones who are already putting themselves out there to educate. They want to educate you because they want you to know that they're just people and they're not stereotypes. It's the same as using um, any kind of other diversity in your stories. If you're, if you're writing about somebody who is a race or a religion that is different than you, you need to do a whole ton of research. And part of that research is going to be determining whether you need to write that character in the first place. Um, something that you should always be asking yourself when you're writing outside of your own kind of bubble is, why, why do I need to be writing this? Why do I need to write this? Why does this character need to have this particular trait and be in my novel that I personally, as the person who I am, is writing? And that's another thing about getting feedback, about getting... Um, uh, like sensitivity reader and and I know people roll their eyes at like sensitivity call it accuracy then an accuracy reader I'm writing outside my bubble in a book um, that's kind of I'm kind of tweaking right now um, because I am writing about um, Jews in the Soviet Union in the 1970s and I am Jewish I have never been to the Soviet Union and I hope never to go there and I was not alive in the 70s so um, I have a sensitivity reader, an accuracy reader, who grew up in the Soviet Union and left as a teenager. So um, she is going to, she's reading through the whole manuscript right now and, and fixing my, my terrible, terrible Russian that I just Googled. Dog, dog, no. You silly girl. My dog's sitting here ripping her toy apart, eviscerating her toy. Here's more of this stuff. I've got a whole bunch of toy guts now. Yes, I do. You're ripping your stuff apart. You're very cute. Um, so even though I am Jewish and even though I am of Ukrainian descent, I've never been to Ukraine. My family is not, my family left there a really long time ago. They were never um, part of the, 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 my family left Ukraine before the Soviet Union was a thing. So my family's been gone for a long time uh, from, from Ukraine, not from Europe, but from Ukraine. So... I wanted to get that perspective because I grew up as an American and whether you want to admit it or not, as an American, you have kind of had your whole life colored by anti-communist, anti-Soviet rhetoric. So um, even just in doing some research about how the United States kind of altered a lot of its culture to oppose the Soviets was pretty mind open, like, you know, eye opening. And, and I didn't realize that it was that serious that it was that severe so um anyway this is about mental health when you're writing outside of your your lane especially with um marginalized groups please 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 do your research talk to people in those groups and really really examine whether or not you need to be writing that marginalized group consider why ask yourself why do i want to do this why does this character need to be like this and really be honest with yourself. Anyway, um, this is a long video. I'm gonna cut it off here. I hope that I helped out and don't forget to wash your hands. Black Lives Matter and have a nice day.